today we're going to talk a little bit about commas. Commas are oftentimes a misunderstood form of punctuation. Not only misunderstood, but misused all the time. So this is one of the reasons why the English 11 SOL likes to focus on commas. They want to see that you have a mastery of some of the basic forms and that you don't just sprinkle them all over your paper because you think it needs some decoration. So here's a little bit of information on when to use commas and how to use them to help you on those difficult questions on the English writing SOL. So the SOL loves to ask questions about commas, right? To paraphrase, they love them like a fat kid loves cake, right? So you need to be able to identify errors with comma for the technology enhanced items. Those are the ones where you're going to have to drag and drop the pieces of punctuation. And they're also going to use them just for the regular multiple choice. So you need to know where they go and how to use them because there are at least 10 questions on commas on the writing SOL. So one of the easiest forms of commas to figure out are the use of commas in a series. So when you have three things in a series, or you might even have more, you're going to set them off with commas to separate them. Okay, so here's an example. I had to get bread, comma, ham, comma, milk, comma, and ketchup at Food Lion yesterday. These commas indicate that each item, the bread, the ham, the milk, and the ketchup, are all separate items. You're not going to put all of those together, as that would be a really disgusting sandwich. So again, the commas are used here to separate these items in a series. Here's another example. David, John, and Adam all made the soccer team. So I need a comma here after David, I need a comma after John, and before that and here, right? Because all three of them made the soccer team. One of the only ways to make an error is that you're not thinking, and instead of three or more items, there's only two. So if you have two things, it's a compound, not a series. So going back to the boys on the soccer team, John and David, are both goalies. There's no comma needed because you only have two items in this series. I like to hunt and fish on weekends. Again, there's only two items, so you don't need that comma. A famous dance makes people pop and lock. And again, no comma is needed because you've got two things only in a series. When girls dye their hair and their hair is now blonde and blue, right? Or the famous dress is black and blue or white and gold. No commas are needed there because there's only two elements as opposed to three or more. So again, there's the comma there before your and. Don't accidentally put the comma behind the and, right? Put the comma there right in front of it. When you get the technology enhanced items, remember some of the comma spaces can be left blank. So just like Taylor Swift who sings the song blank space, blank spaces can be okay. They want to know if you understand how to use them. So if it's a series of three or more items, we're gonna set them off with commas. If there's only two, we won't need them. So here's item number one. Lisa and Steven were nominated for Ring Dance King and Queen. Do we need commas here or here after King? No, we don't need commas because these are both compounds. There's only two things in the series. Check out this one. I had to go home and clean my room, pick up the dog at the vet, and mow the grass before practice. Where are you going to need commas here? You're going to need a comma here after room and one after vet because there are three different things here in a series. Ellen could not find her glasses, notebook, or pen. In this one, you're going to need commas after glasses and after notebook because you have three things in a series. 
What about this one? You may use either pen or pencil for the quiz. Again, you're going to leave that one blank because you've only got two things in this, and two is a compound. If you've got three or more, you're going to use those commas. So keep that in mind as you take the exam. It is okay to leave spaces open without punctuation. You don't have to put something in every blank. Another type of comma problem that they're going to ask you about is a comma splice. Just like in HVAC or uh, heating, when you work with splicing wires, you're cutting them and putting them together. So a comma splice is a comma that's chilling out or is staying where it's not allowed to be. Just like connecting the wrong types of wires is going to end up shorting or electrocuting yourself. So when you have a comma splice, it's a comma right connecting where it's not allowed to make a connection so one of the places that commas cannot go is between two complete sentences so if you have two complete sentences you can't use a comma between them so if you're trying to see if it's a complete sentence check for a subject right you need a noun and a verb right and nothing that makes it needing to be attached to something else so here's a comma splice so you can see what one looks like I love my dog. She is furry and has a heart-shaped tattoo. So in this one, we have a comma chilling out someplace that it's not allowed to go, right? This comma here after dog can't be there. We have some options to fix it. So to get rid of that comma splice, we can make it a period. I love my dog, period. She is furry and has a heart-shaped tattoo, right? I can put a period in there. I can also put a semicolon in there. The semicolon is the one that in the olden days we used to use to make winky faces on our cell phone. A semicolon goes between two complete sentences that are somehow related. So I love my dog, semicolon, she is furry and has a heart-shaped tattoo. This suggests that the reason that I love my dog is because she's so fuzzy and because she has a heart-shaped tattoo, right? You can also add in a fanboy. Right? Those are, those are the connectors. A long time ago, there was a show and they called them Conjunction Junction, What's Your Function on Schoolhouse Rock? A conjunction joins things. So a fanboy can join those two sentences. So I love my dog and she is furry and has a heart-shaped tattoo would work. Right? Um, I can add in one of those fanboys, but although I can make it a period, and that would be grammatically correct. I could make it a semicolon, or I can add in one of the fanboys. I cannot keep that comma there because this is going to create a comma splice. So here are examples with sentences that have comma splices in them. See if you can find it. John is the new boy at school. He plays the guitar and, in his in, and, and as is in chorus too. So again, in this particular sentence, where's my comma splice? All right. If you said this comma after school, then you are correct. So what I'd have to do to fix it is say John is the new boy at school, period. Capitalize the H in he. Or John is the new boy in school, semicolon. Or John is the new boy at school, comma. And then add in a fanboy. Whenever I get a free minute, I like to download music on my phone. I like to listen to new artists on iTunes. Where's the comma splice? If you chose the one right here after phone, you're correct. And again, a simple way to fix this would be to get rid of that comma that's chilling out between complete sentences, like I like to download music on my phone, and I like to listen to new artists, and put a period or a semicolon in there. I went home sick. Apparently, I missed a quiz. Where's the comma splice? If you chose the one that's right here after sick, you are correct. And again, a way to fix this is to put a period and capitalize the A in apparently, or you could make it a semicolon. So those are your options. So one of the things you're going to have to look for when you look for comma splices is, is it a complete sentence? I went home sick. Yes. Apparently, I missed a quiz. 
Yes, that can stand alone as a sentence. So since you have two sentences that can stand alone, you cannot have that comma in there. So again, your options are to replace it with a period or to add in that semicolon. Another use for commas is to indicate detachability. It acts as like a coat hanger where you can pick up that hanger and move it to the back end of your sentence or move it to the back end of your closet. If you can pick it up and move it to the back end of the sentence, it's going to need a comma. If it's already back there at the end of the sentence, you don't need to add in a comma. But again, if it's at that front end, you're going to need a comma to indicate that you can detach it and move it to the back end of the sentence. So here are some examples. After Beck won, Kanye said he should not have won Best Album at the Grammy Awards. Can I pick up after Beck won and move it to the back end of the sentence? Kanye said he should not have won Best Album at the Grammy Awards after Beck won. That works just fine. So again, I don't need the comma because it's now in the back end of the sentence, but if it's here at the beginning as an introductory element, I'm going to need that comma. Every Friday, we eat breakfast at Pops. Again, if I can pick up that phrase every Friday and move it to the back end of the sentence and it still makes sense, I'm going to need a comma. We eat breakfast at Pops every Friday. So if I can move it, I'm going to need that comma there. Because I was late, I had to check in at attendance. Again, I can take that whole because and move it to the back end of the sentence. I had to check in at attendance because I was late. So as you're looking at these questions, if you can pick it up and move it to the back end of the sentence, then you're going to need a comma to set it off. Another type of comma question that they ask are interrupters. The proper term for this is in a positive phrase, but that's sometimes hard to remember. What they are is descriptors. They are inserted in the middle of the sentence set off by commas, and they interrupt it to give more information. They're set off with commas because they can be deleted. So take a look at this one. My brother, a student at James Madison University, is studying history. This piece here, a student at James Madison University, describes my brother. So it's just giving you more information about who my brother is. I could take it out. My brother is studying history. So again, this is an example of one of those interrupters. When you have an interrupter, you're going to put commas on both sides of it to indicate that you could take it out. If you're not sure if you put them in the right place, make sure that you can read what comes before the comma and what comes after as a complete sentence. So for example, my brother, a student at James Mad Madison University, is studying history. I can take this out and it still stays my brother is studying history. So again, check. If you're not sure about the commas, check if you can take that out. If you can, you need a comma on both sides of that a positive phrase. Here's another example. The girl who sits in the back, back desk, Catherine, left her cell phone. This, right, Catherine, is describing the girl who sits in the back desk. So. Right? The girl who sits in the back desk left her cell phone. I can take this out of the sentence, this word Catherine, and it still stands alone. Or Catherine left her cell phone. So I need those commas to indicate that it can be taken out. All it's doing is adding more information. John Mayer, a popular singer, admitted in an interview that he has ego problems. Again, I could take this, a popular singer, all it's doing is describing John Mayer if you didn't know who he is. It says John Mayer admitted in an interview that he has ego problems. If I can take it out, I need those commas on either side. So if I had something like Kanye West, comma, a famous rapper known for outlandish activities, comma, right, did another one yesterday. So again, if I have something like that, if I can take it out, you need commas to set it off. Another form of punctuation that they're going to ask you about are semicolons. As I already mentioned, semicolons, which are the ones that we use to make the winky face, semicolons go between two complete sentences. Take this for example. 
I wanted to go skiing. However, I was too sick. I wanted to go skiing can stand as a full sentence. However, I was too sick can also stand as a full sentence. So to connect those two, I use the semicolon, right? I didn't go skiing because I was too sick. So a semicolon indicates that these sentences are connected. Colons are used to set off a list. It's the verbal equivalent of ta-da, right? If I said, there's only one celebrity that I would love to date, colon, then you'd name the celebrity and it sets it off. It's a way of setting off a sentence so that everybody pays attention, right? We finally learned one secret, semi, uh, colon, and then what is that secret? So go directly to ATS and get all of the following, colon. Right? This sets it off. These are all the things I need. Work from Stephen, Lucas, and Rachel. You need no only one thing. Colons are cool. In order to do well on your SOL, colon, eat a good breakfast. Right? So again, colons set something off that's very important. So you'll have a complete sentence and then things that are set off in an outstanding kind of a way, peculiarly set off so that people pay attention to whatever that thing is, right? My father got an important award yesterday, colon, right? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel of the Year in the Air Force. Whatever it is that you set off with a colon, you're trying to show people that it's very important. So that's what colons do, is they set off something that's important, one thing, or sometimes several things in a list. But again, there'll be a complete sentence that comes before, a colon, and then your list or your one thing that you have. The biggest tip or trick for the SOL is don't be afraid to leave blank spaces. For the technology enhanced questions, they're gonna ask you to drag and drop punctuation, and they're gonna give you commas and periods and semicolons and colons. You don't have to fill every space. You won't use each type of punctuation. So here's an example. Rachel and Sarah, the girls on the cheerleading squad who are injured, cannot compete today or tomorrow. The first step to answering these questions is to tackle it step by step. Think about it. Remember, we don't use commas with compounds. We do use them for an a positive phrase. So here I have Rachel and Sarah. Would I need a comma there? No, right? So I can just leave it blank. That's a compound. Rachel and Sarah, well, who are they? The girls on the cheerleading squad who are injured. Aha, so the girls describe or modify Rachel and Sarah. So I'd need a comma here after Sarah, and I'd need a comma here after injured because those are highlighting the girls on the cheerleading squad who are injured, and that's describing Rachel and Sarah. So they cannot compete today or tomorrow. And again, we've got a compound here. When you have a compound or two things, you don't need a comma. So out of all of these four blanks, you really only need a comma after Sarah and a comma after injured, right? So it should look like this. Rachel and Sarah, the girls on the cheerleading squad who are injured, cannot compete today or tomorrow. One of the big things to remember is that if you miss one item on these technology enhanced questions, you get the question wrong. So think through them carefully. Go back and think, is it an a positive phrase? Am I setting things off in a special way, like I would use a colon for that? Is it a complete sentence next to a complete sentence, in which case I'd use a semicolon, right? Think through them carefully. Because if you get one item wrong, the whole question is wrong. The biggest thing is to not freak out and just scatter punctuation everywhere because you think you have to fill every blank. Keep in mind, some places will not need anything. So don't fill every hole unless it really needs to be filled. If you pay attention to these simple comma rules, remembering if it's a series of three or more, we set it off with commas. If we have an a positive phrase, we set it off with commas. If we have an introductory element, 
we set it off with commas. If you remember those rules, then you'll get the majority of these questions right. So again, think about the sentences carefully before you decide to either put in the punctuation or leave it out as needed. If you follow these simple tips, you'll do great on your SOL and be able to ace the writing portion of it. Good luck.